All right. The UFC is back in action next Saturday, May 30th. And fans were a little bit worried about this card coming together. But this past Thursday, we found out that a lot was happening with this card. <laughs> a flurry of fights were announced, and one of which includes my guest at this time. He's going to take on Lewis Smolka. Let us say hello to Casey Kenny. Casey, how are you, sir? Good, man. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Thank you for doing this first off. But uh, how did this all come together? Because from everything I've been told, this wasn't something that was really in the works for a while. It all happened very, very quickly. Walk us through it from your perspective. Uh, Yeah. So I I mean, I knew that fights were going to be coming. You know, obviously, that was pretty uh, straightforward there that the UFC was back on a roll. And, you know, I knew I, I threw my name in there that I wanted to get going again. And Yesterday I got, or not yesterday, uh, Wednesday morning I got a text that said, "Hey, are you, you think you could fight on the 30th?" And then a couple hours later, it was like, "Well, we got Smoka for you." Um, obviously, we're from the same management. I don't think a whole lot of uh, guys were willing to step up on the 30th, but you know, we both threw our names out there, and why not make some fights? There you go. Um, we we last saw you compete on that Rio Rancho card against Marab Dwalish Willie, and you knew that would be a tough exciting fight heading into it and in the end Marab was able to get the decision certainly not the result you would hope for but what were you able to at least take away from that fight uh, in, in sharing the cage with a spark plug like Marab Dewalish Willie right um one I don't think I'm gonna face too many guys like that you know Marab style is one and one and not one in its own but kind of you know for the division there's not many guys that do what he does uh Two, I think that, you know, if Marab and I were to run it back, it'd be a little bit different. Uh, you know, I got a, you know, he never, he didn't really do much that I didn't expect, but now I, I you know, I would definitely make some changes uh, in, the, in the fight. And uh, really, you know, I felt like I was prepared. I was ready to go. Um, I may have just made a couple like tactical errors in the fight. You know, I could have switched up a lot of different things, you know. Uh, offensive wrestled, not tried to take his head off with one punch, you know, that type of thing. So really just uh, sticking to the game plan, being composed, which sounds kind of crazy being, what, 16 fights in, but uh, I kind of got lost in trying to knock Marab out, I think is what it was, is, you know, put on a show for everybody. I had so much grappling in my last uh, two fights in the UFC that I just wanted to go showcase that I could, you know, knock people out too. And uh, kind of forgot that, you know, I can grapple as well. And uh, I think that's kind of what gave up my takedowns was looking for that knockout. So I guess just being a little bit more patient, you know, kind of beat around the bush there, but just being a little bit more patient, sticking to the game plan, that type of stuff. Sounds like day one stuff, but, uh, you know, uh, it goes a long way. I mean, obviously, nobody wants to lose in this sport, of course, but you've handled it all with class and dignity, which is one of the things that I love about this sport. And when you have that first loss in the UFC, there's two directions you can go. We've seen right. both of them. We can, we've can. we seen guys just falter under the pressure, completely bums them out, and they never really bounce back. Or you can sort of accept it, use it, and make it part of the journey. And knowing you, you're certainly on the latter side of this. Let's get this L out of the way. Get right yeah. back at it, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm ready to smash that. You know, you're only as good as your last fight. I'm ready to smash that, you know, from a long time ago next weekend. So, uh, you know, that's part of it, too. And, man, I like to fight. You know, I like to fight. I like to step up and uh, let's do it. We are in the middle of a very strange time in the world. How have you been able to sort of navigate the waters with training and getting work in with all these COVID-19 restrictions in place? Well, uh, you know, especially being here in Arizona, it's been nice this entire quarantine. So I've been out and about, uh, you know, running, doing some stuff on my own when I can. And then um, still been getting stuff in, you know, here and there. And really for like the last three weeks, four, four weeks, you know, I've been able to get in the gym and do pretty much my normal my normal uh, activities. But I was, uh, you know, sneaking in some training with some friends here and there. Uh you know, uh, during the quarantine, won't go too uh, deep into it, but, um, you know, it was a good, uh, it was a good little break really from like being in the gym twice a day, all day, every day, you know, um, at the beginning, like right after my fight, you know, kind of all started with, uh, the fight with Marab. So I got a couple, a little break like you normally do. And then, you know, I started chipping, chipping away back at it. And, uh, 
really picked it up about three, four weeks ago and then got the call a couple of days ago. So I was like, all right, let's go. Let's do it. Here's here's one of the things that I think is very interesting about you, Casey, because you are, as everyone can see right now, you're a very calm, cool, collected, positive guy, but you thrive on chaos very well. I mean, look at your UFC run to this point. You took the Borg fight on super short notice eight days after you became a two division LFA champion. The next fight was with Manny Bermudez that became a catchweight bout after he missed weight and you got the job done. And the Murad fight was as close to normal to, as fighting can get and now you get another short notice fight in the middle of a freaking pandemic it seems like you thrive on all of this in a weird way is that accurate yeah i do i do you know that's my thing uh chaos seems to calm me even more sometimes you know it's a weird it's a weird thing but i mean one i'm a fighter this is what i do man you know uh, and when i say i stay ready uh i definitely stay ready you know i kind of got into just that mode when I start one, when I first started training, and then two, really like after the contender series, you know, I was like texting Jason House every flyweight that fell out for almost three years. Like, I'll fight next weekend, I'll fight tomorrow, I don't care, I'll cut 20 pounds, you know. And I just got in that mentality, and you know, I I guess the first time, well, you know, I had a bunch of opponent switches and stuff, but the first time I got a real, real short notice was the LFA champ champ fight. And you know how that went. So, you know, between that and the Borg, I got all the confidence in the world. It's like, if you want me to fight, I'll, I'll step up tomorrow if you need me. The fight with Lewis is interesting enough on paper already, but you sort of alluded to the, the similarities between you guys because, you know, one, like you said, you're part of the same management team, but I, I was seeing on Instagram and stuff, you guys share a, a few of the same sponsors as well. So there's a <laughs> lot of common ground heading into this fight, is there not? Yeah, yeah, for sure, you know, and uh, I'm sure uh, Luis feels the same way, you know, it's it's business, you know, we're fighting, you know, I, I don't hate the guy, uh, but uh, definitely coming to kick his ass next weekend. This is Lewis's second go around with the UFC, and his story is 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 pretty pretty impressive and spectacular. But he seems to have turned things around in not only his fight career, but a lot of different aspects of his life as well. And he's coming off that great performance against Ryan McDonald in Vancouver, winning five of his last six fights. So from like an X's and O's perspective, and I know this thing came together quickly. How do you like this matchup? Oh, I love it, man. Uh, you know he comes forward he's gonna fight me you know uh he's gonna stand there he's gonna exchange may have some grappling as well you know he's a super well-rounded uh fighter just like myself but uh i think it's the fight that i want you know um as far as like stylistically and just just being there and putting on a good show you know i feel like i want to get in one of those fight of the night blood baths and if anyone if, it, if there's anyone to do that with it's definitely smoka you know uh you know good my last my first three opponents were great but uh you know they were those those, those were guys that you definitely you probably weren't getting into those blood bath uh, you know fight of the night type type fights unless uh you know, unless I stuff Marab's takedowns, <laughs> you know, so, something like that. But uh, I don't know. Holding holding me against the cage is a different little style than I think Luis is going to bring. Or Luis. Sorry, I keep I keep messing up that first name. We'll stick to Smoker. <laughs> a lot of people do that, too. I've actually asked him about that. I remember I called the first time I interviewed Smoko was probably like four years ago. And I called him Luis and he corrected me right off the bat. So I'll never I'll never make that mistake again. <laughs> never mess that one up. Yeah. Have, have you and Lewis trained before? Like, I feel like with all these similarities that especially where you guys are both at in the country and stuff. And Lewis sort of sort of bounces around from gym to gym. He's at Oyama more so than than any, any other place at this point. But have you guys trained together at all? Uh, ironically, no, we haven't. Uh, I mean, I, I guess, you know, we are a little bit of ways away, but I haven't done much training in, uh, California besides like the San Francisco area with, uh, uh, coach, uh, Chris Carriasso, which that's actually where I first knew about Smoka because Chris fought him seven years ago, I believe on, uh, one of the, the fight cards. It was, I think it was, uh, might've been the fight before Demetrius even. Um, I know Smoker was undefeated. He was young. He was like 22. So uh, that's how, that's how I, you know, I knew I've known about Smoker for a long, long time. You know, I was I was just starting to. Actually, I think I was an amateur. I was training with Chris. Uh, 
at the time and you know obviously was watching uh, the coach throw down in the ufc and uh so i've known about him for a long time but never actually got to train with him so did you see yourself fighting lewis all those years ago did you sort of envision that uh yeah i figured at one point it would be especially you know at the time he was a flyweight i was a flyweight uh you know, I never really thought it would go this way, but, uh, you know, um, and at the time he was an undefeated, you know, top contender. So I figured, you know, Hey, if I'm going to be in there, you know, with the best of them in the flyweights, I'm probably going to run across him at some point. So he was, uh, you know, definitely not a guy that, uh, I just found out about. After the three Jacksonville cards, one of the big talking points coming out of those events was fighting in the empty arena, being able to hear all the stuff, even the commentators. So, I mean, you fought on the Contender Series twice right. in, in a two-month span. So I assume fighting in a closed-door setting without fans, that's not going to have any effect on you whatsoever. No, nah, man. Um, and as you can see, it hasn't really had much effect on anyone. You know, uh, they, there's been some great fights the last You know, I'm a fight fan myself. The, the last three cards, I was... I was like a kid on Christmas, you know, watching those fights. So uh, it's definitely a different feeling um, walking out with the, with no crowd. It's kind of like an eerie quietness. But uh, as you can see, once that, that cage door shuts, uh, you know, the octagon door gets locked. It's, uh, it's a fight. It's on. You're hearing your coaches. And, you know, most of the time I kind of drown out the crowd, you know, a little bit too. You know, you hear the oohs and ahs, but for the most part, it's just kind of white noise. I, you're talking about bonus hunting here. You want that bloodbath with, with Lewis. Hopefully you guys can get an extra 50 G's. But mm -hmm. if you look at the, the three fight cards and the bonuses and stuff, like I agree with most of them, but I, I thought Simone and Borg should have got 50 G's for fight of the night on that Wednesday night card. But for some reason they didn't get it. Do you feel like, be, I, I don't know why, like, I, I, I just don't know how they're putting the bonuses together. Who's making those decisions, but I feel like they've gotten a few things wrong. Would you agree with that? Um, yeah, you know, um, I guess I really haven't checked out too many, uh, or who got the bonuses, I guess, uh, you know, I watched the fights, but I'd have to go back and double check to see who got the bonuses. Uh, I, I'm not sure of, of that one, but the Borg Simone fight was great. Uh, who ended up getting fight of the night, uh, that night on Wednesday? Oh, who did get that? I know it wasn't them. I know okay. it wasn't them. It drove me crazy. Um, oh, it was Kelleher and Azure. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Which was a fun yeah. fight, too. Right, that was a fun fight. Well, I would say uh, I'd question that one, but Hunter's my Hunter's my friend, so I'm happy to see him uh, get that uh, that extra 50 Gs. So uh, no, no comment there, but there were some good fights on that card. Yeah, all right, well said, well said. And congratulations to Hunter getting engaged. I saw that on social media. That guy is, uh, what a streak. Became a dad, got in a fight, and then got engaged. All yeah, in like man. a three-month span. A, he's, a, he's an awesome dude, awesome dude. Uh, got got life right in front of him right now, so that's cool. Happy for, sure. for him. How does this thing all play out next Saturday night in Vegas against a very game opponent in Louis Smolka? Ah, uh, man, you know... Normally I got a prediction this time uh, there's, I'm just going to go with, you know, I'm coming for that W, but you know, knockout 15 minute war submission, something's going to happen. And, uh, you know, I'm going to, uh, this short notice, I'm going to feel it out, see where the fight takes me and, uh, hopefully expose, uh, Smoka and something and take advantage of it. With everything being how it is right now. There's a lot of opportunity, I feel, and I think you feel this way as well, to be very active in 2020. And the UFC train has left the station. Is that the plan for you? Let the chaos just continue to rain on for as long as it lasts? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, this year was probably the least, well, I guess it was about a year. I mean, I had the Marab fight about this, about a year after I got signed, but those two fights in a year, that was the least active I've been since I've turned pro. You know, so uh, and I know it uh, really has nothing to do with the UFC. They just kind of the way they they match stuff up. And then uh, obviously with this pandemic, I was kind of kind of bummed out. I was hoping to get rolling again, even after the Marab fight. You know, I was healthy. Um, so this is what I like to do. I've been wanting to get on a get on a roll where I'm fighting, you know, four times a year, that type of thing. Shoot, I'll fight five. I'll Angela Hill it fight five, six times a year. <laughs> uh, you know, that's. That's me. That's at least four times a year. That keeps me keeps me sane. You know, uh, if if I'm not fighting that many times a year, um, 
you know, not uh, not looking for trouble, but uh, I definitely I, I keep on a, a level playing field the more I fight. You know, uh, that's that's what I like to do. I like to compete. You know, I also like to train. But when you train for months, especially when you're ready, you know, you're ready to throw down. So, you know, no matter no matter what happens next weekend, you know, I'm looking to get uh, another one in this summer right away. And uh, I think, like you just said, you know, 2020 is going to be a great opportunity to uh, jump on some back to back fights. Casey, always a pleasure, man. One of the the more positive fighters on the roster. Great catching up with you. Really looking forward to this fight next Saturday with Smolka. All the best to you. And I, uh, the one thing I don't envy besides getting in a cage and fighting another man is getting that swab up your nose, tickling your brain <laughs> next week. You ready for that? Yeah, I'm definitely not looking forward to that. But, uh, hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Casey. For sure. Thank you, man. Have a good one. You too.